All right. Well, I think we can start um, if that's okay with everyone. So yeah. um, <clears throat> um, let me first uh, present myself. So I'm Lola. I'm the, I'm the manager of communications and animating the community for Jogo. And um, right now, today, I will be animating uh, this event. Let's continue. Yeah. Okay, I present myself. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Marine. I'm the administrative head of Joggle, and I also assist the team uh, in the daily work. Mark, do you want to present yourself? Yes, I'm Mark, uh, and I'm one of the co-founders of Juggle, and I also am a researcher uh, on network science and social network analysis. Lucas, you want to present yourself again? <laughs> we, can't, we can't hear you right now, Luca. Oh, really? Hey, no, Luca, me? Luca. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. So okay. yeah. Uh, so again, I, I'm the developer here at Juggle. So mainly front end, but also back end. So yeah. Nice to okay. meet you. <laughs> okay, great. Um, maybe uh, the uh, Antonin who just arrived. Maybe if he wants to present himself, we like this. We have the whole Juggle team on our side, and then uh, we can have Yuera and the participants. So yeah, hello everyone, I'm Antonin and I'm uh, in charge of the coordination of the co-immune uh, program, basically. And I have a um, um, biology background in summary. <laughs> Great, thank you. So uh, the ERA team, do you want to talk to us a little bit about yourself? Hey, uh, First presentation. I'm Maral, I hope you can be best with me. Uh, so I'm one of the co-founders of Hera. Uh, I'm a physician by training, uh, did my master's in public health. So I'm more focused in global health and public health, I guess. And I'm Kunark. I am uh, the project coordinator of Hera. I am mainly responsible for the field trainings and uh, app tutorials. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm yes. I'm a software architect, also a developer. Uh, I'm a computer engineer. Um, I joined Hera a couple of months ago. Uh, yeah, I'm the tech guy <laughs> in the team. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, maybe Grace, if you want to present yourself. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, actually, I'm Grace Romero. I'm representing the, um, the company um, Excelia, which is um, uh, where we had agreed to, um, to provide about a day of um, our time uh, to support uh, this project, uh, this association, and, you know, um, to just be there for the team and to, um, to answer any questions if they are related to um, clinical research, because that's what we're specialized in. Great. Thank you. Um, so uh, maybe I can say just a really few words about um, Jogo and then uh, Koimi. Um, so Jogo, uh, as uh, most of you know, is an international nonprofit organization based in Paris that aimed at mobilizing collective intelligence to tackle the most important challenges of our time. So uh, since the launch of our online collaborative platform in June 2019, we have been mobilizing a vast ecosystem of uh, enablers and we have more and more participants right now we have uh, about 400 participants and members on the platform and um, in September 2019 so about two months ago we launched the Coimmune program which is our first uh, program it's a open, uh, innov um, an open uh, initiative that aims to collectively address the contemporary challenges of vaccination. 
And so two challenges were defined. The vaccination hesitancy challenge and access to vaccination. So in that context, uh, we, wanted, we invited uh, the project uh, team of ERA, who, who uh, have uh, submitted their project to one of the challenges of Coimune and have been uh, in contact with us. And uh, maybe I will let you guys present what you've been doing, where you're at, and uh, also what your needs are and uh, things like that. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So um, the the idea of Hera was first discussed between me and Hande, the other co-founder who cannot be here at the moment, uh, three years ago, uh, and we both have been working with Syrian refugees mostly in Turkey, in bordering cities, and in Istanbul. Uh, and one thing that we realized uh, as people who are working in the field, I also have a uh, disaster response background, medical rescue background. One thing that struck me the most was that there was a huge gap in demand. Uh, so we were actually, in contrast to common belief, we were actually good at supplying things, but it was the demand side that uh, we struggled a lot with. So Hera was basically founded in this idea that we have to find a way to increase the demand for especially preventive care and especially vaccination, obviously, because you might know this, but uh, Syria uh, used to have pretty good vaccination levels pre-war. But after the war, obviously, a lot of things went sideways. Um, so that's how we came up with the idea. Then we started working uh, with Hande on it. Um, and currently, here is a mobile app in the form of a mobile app, but we do see it as a more general global health uh, innovation. Uh, we have been working with Yellowzone, uh, providing a short uh, message service side of the reminders, and also a web platform. Uh, in 2017, we got funded by Grand Challenges Canada for a proof of concept phase. We are nearing the term. Um, Pinar has been coordinating that project. And basically where we are right now is um, we are finalizing the proof of concept phase. We, are, we created our MVP and started doing a third round of user design research to understand the participants' uh, perceptions of the app. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, and I think, Dola, would that be the time that I show the app to you guys so that I can show the interventions? Yes, though, that's great. That would be great. Hmm? OK, give me a second, please, and I'll be able to. So maybe uh, there's uh, someone who joined us, Vittorio. Uh, if you want, you can uh, say hello and present yourself. Uh, if you can't, we understand also seeing you that you're walking outside. <laughs> oh wait, I think we cannot hear you right now. Let me uh, activate your you're mic. Good. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hello. I'm uh, I'm on the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just uh, I just. Uh, uh, get off, uh, got off uh, from a ship, yeah, because they were, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, so, so for, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry, <laughs> probably I I'm, uh, was sharing my screen by accident. No, no, we can hear you, it's not your screen, it's Ahal's screen, it's normal. You can ah, okay, okay, no, no, because, uh, yeah, okay, okay, I'm, um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see myself anymore. And, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Vittorio, uh, I'm in Napoli, uh, Italia, and I'm, uh, well, I'm trying to open a uh, BioFab Lab uh, in uh, here, and uh, in uh, between uh, Ischia, which is an island uh, in front of Napoli, and uh, Napoli itself. Uh, it's, uh, it's a project with uh, the support of uh, some uh, two, two local universities and some other uh, 
probably potential partners uh, also outside Italy, and uh, I did a PhD on uh, biohacking. I completed it uh, a few months ago. Uh, that's basically Great. it. Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And I just saw someone else who, someone else who joined us, uh, Sally, in case uh, you want to present yourself, uh, you're welcome to do so. If not, uh, it's fine. Uh, for your information, we cannot hear you right now in case you're talking. <laughs> All right, Ahal, if you wanna, if you wanna go ahead and present the app. Uh, okay, so as I was saying, uh, so we wanted to tackle the problem of demand uh, gap uh, in the preventive healthcare services, and um, the most vital things that we realized were first the vaccinations uh, of the children in uh, refugee populations, and the other one was prenatal care. So the main intervention of HERA is providing uh, reminders, uh, push notification reminders for the uh, uptake of uh, timely uh, vac vaccination and prenatal care appointments. Uh, of course, the, the app comes with a couple other uh, features too, but this is the, the, the main intervention that uh, has uh, the biggest uh, um, chunk of evidence that saves uh, that is known to save lives. So uh, let me go into the app. It's, it's going to be pretty quick, uh, so, uh, I hope at least. So this is our main screen, which is very like um, simple and everything. Um, so what user part uh, users do? Being a Syrian refugee woman, do is fill out their health information uh, here. And then, oh, sorry. Uh, and if they're pregnant, they can fill out information about their pregnancy and the dates of prenatal visit. Uh, and program automatically calculates when the uh, prenatal checkups should be done during that nine month of period. As you know, World Health Organization uh, suggests that there should be at least four prenatal checkups during the pregnancy mm -hmm. for different uh, reasons. Um, and for the vaccinations, so what uh, participants do is they add a child, they put their name and gender, date of birth, and if they had any vaccinations before. Uh, and then these are my children, mock children, mind you, that those are not, I don't have. Wow, um, you have many children. <laughs> uh, yeah, Aral Jr. is a nice one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So basically, app calculates using the Turkish uh, vaccination calendar when the uh, when the dates uh, for the vaccinations are, mm -hmm. uh, and there are many different ones. As far as I know, it's uh, the Turkish vaccination calendar is has more vaccines than the, uh, than France. Um, and then once they put this information in, they can view it in the calendar. Uh, just as an example, this one. So this would show the like cumulative um, uh, vaccines that they need to be done. They're all in the same day because I did not uh, like check them as vaccines are complete or not vaccinated. Uh, but the app sends notifications one day before the appointment date and the same day of the appointment. And every week for a month, it reminds them or asks them to fill out this information if their vaccines are complete or not vaccinated. So as I said, this is the main intervention. But if you go to the main screen, you can see that we have the um, language options, Turkish, Arabic, and English. They can upload uh, their health records here mainly either taking a photo of it or just choosing from the gallery, which I just realized I should not open. <laughs> um, <laughs> another thing is they can open up health information. This is very small because we realize that actually they're not, this is not being used much, but there's pregnant uh, nutrition, nutrition for mothers, uh, fetus development from weeks, uh, and stuff like that. Another thing that they can do is using their 
using the Google Maps, they can see the uh, healthcare centers nearby their houses. Mm. So this is where I am right now. And these are all the hospitals wow. uh, of different levels, like the, and this just takes you to the app that you want to use. Oh, and great. Direction. One other thing that we added uh, was the calling 911, which we call 112 in Turkey. The reason we realized we needed this is because Syria did not have a coordinated and national level uh, ambulance service. They had private providers who you would need to know the number to call. So they, there was no centralized number. So it basically just directs you uh, to the phone where you can just call the uh, the 911 if there's an emergency. All right. Um, so I guess that's that's it, right? Yeah. Um, Great. Um, I have one question that I I wondered when you were showing, is that when they have to fill which vaccines their children have already had, uh, how do they? I mean, is the name that they have had in theory, or if it was any other country, how do you know? That for compared to the name in Turkey, is it the same name of the vaccine, and it, can this be an issue for them to recognize which vaccine uh, based on the names? Uh, so it's it should not be an issue because all of the vaccines in Turkey, even if they have private names under that, they have to put those things. In addition to that, when they go to the primary care center where they get the uh, vaccine. They call it by that name, not the private name. The so reason, what, is, what is, can you clarify just what you call private name? Oh, like the brand name. I mean, All right. Uh, like I cannot think of any brand names for uh, uh, vaccines right now, but like the, at under- So when you, when you pick, can you show again, you know, when you pick the vaccines on the, your children's uh, profile? So, okay, and and it will give the name, uh, the g generic name, I guess. Is that it? Yes, yes, generic name. And all the documents they receive from the hospital have these names instead of the private brand names. Yes, all right. Uh, and and it is easy for them. It's uh, the comparison between uh, that generic name is what also they use in uh, Syria, Siri. Uh, no, so they're not the same, but since right. they're doing the Turkish uh, vaccination calendar, they don't actually, when they go to the primary care center, they don't actually just pick and choose. They just yeah. calculate the age and they give them whatever is, so it's the same with all around Turkey. Yeah, yeah. I was just, because it's been a question that have been, has been brought up uh, as a potential issue, is that uh, sometimes for... Uh, populations that are migrating migrating from one country to the other the they don't know the the primary care centers don't know which vaccination has already been done because the people themselves don't recognize the name and they can't give the right information or they don't have it written and i was wondering if this is something you've thought about and you were thinking you know if you if you thought about it and if it's also an issue between Syria and, and Turkey, or uh, if it isn't, just. So uh, the general issue that you're explaining is definitely an issue, and Turkey would know. So we have like really good new protocols in the hospitals uh, for the people who actually don't know which vaccines they got. So like catch up vaccines. Uh -huh. So I cannot really comment on their scientific efficacy because I don't know, but I know there's like protocols for it. Um, right. And also, it, it, uh, in addition to that, it also depends on the judgment of the doctor. Like, since this app is not like an official uh, government document, they can just say, like, even if you show it to the doctor, they can just say, well, I don't accept it because it's, you just self-choose it. So I don't, I can't. Just do it as if there's no vaccine before. So that's not really something that we can really. Um, yes, all right. 
All right. Um, does anyone else have any questions so far for for on, on the app? Not for now, it's pretty clear. All right. Uh, maybe if you want to explain what your needs are, or, you know, right now you have this, and what do you want to go towards? What's your goal right now? What are your objectives? And, and you know, uh, how it helps you? And here, you know, uh, I have read the needs on your platform. Wait. I have read the needs on your project page, but uh, maybe it would be nice for everyone to have a, you know, an idea. Um, so yeah, our chronic problem, uh, that our chronic need was the technical support because the, um, none of the co-founders or the primary team had actually uh, have any uh, background in technology, but rather in health. Uh, that was our biggest problem, which caused uh, at least like a six to eight months delay in the development of the mobile app. Uh, and we just finalized our relationship with the old company yesterday, taking all the codes from them. Uh, because um, still after like six months, the app is not working uh, as we would like it to be, if not perfect, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was one of the biggest needs that I put there. Uh, now Yoz is uh, helping us on that issue, providing um, knowledge and also uh, for the languages that he uses, uh, technical support. That's one of the main needs that we have. We still do have, even if we have someone like Yoz uh, with us. Another one was obviously since we were done with the proof of concept phase, now we are looking for new funding options that can help us scale up the app for a larger population in Turkey or possibly in other countries that can the uh, proof of concept phase can be parallel done parallel with other uh, other communities or in other uh, countries. Mm -hmm. All right, and if I am not mistaken, there was also a need for. Uh, animation or educational videos, right? Uh, for uh, explaining how to use the app, I'm guessing? Yeah, so uh, do you wanna uh, talk a bit about the tutorial trainings that we do? So what we want to play? Okay, uh, so we give trainings like uh, first, we talk about uh, health awareness, like about pregnancy and the importance of vaccines. Uh, for like 15 minutes and then we start talking about the app like how to use it what information we need to put on it and uh, what kind of information we get from the app and it's like a half hour uh, training and then sometimes we lose the audience because uh, maybe sometimes they have their children with them and then it uh, gets boring for them. So we want to make it entertaining and interesting and quick to catch. So we needed this uh, visual equipment. Uh, that's why we want to do a maybe one minute educational video. Yeah, and also the, so the reason that we did these trainings and workshops is to get participants. But now in order to scale up, obviously we cannot have everyone in like do a workshop for large populations. So if we have more of a mobile solution like an animation video or explainer video, it's like one or one and a half minutes, just as I was showing you the app uh, here, uh, that would have helped us a lot in scaling up or, or um, increasing the uptake in uh, populations. Uh, because we now have the, the app on Android App Store, but that's not what we're relying on is, again, in the proof of concept base, we actually uh, found participants ourselves. So it was not like people who downloaded from the Android. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I have one question of a uh, more uh, curiosity is, so the, um, and I think it's also based on the need that I saw when you were talking about IT development, 
you were also uh, talking on the need about how to make it maybe a web page, uh, things like that. And I was wondering, um, because right now you're the population you're targeting, do they actually all have a phone that can download the app? Or because I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, it's a really naive question, but I was wondering since they're, you know, refugees, um, they might, might not have the, the tools needed such as a nice smartphone, right? Is a question. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, refugee populations has um, smartphones because it's very beneficial for them. But maybe uh, ten percent of the uh, beneficiaries we encounter with had uh, very old phones, so that they couldn't uh, upload, um, uh, download such an app. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was not a big population, but there still be some people who cannot uh, download because of their old phones. Right. And also one of the reasons that we kept this up very simple, like asking very small amount of questions or having very little amount of features is uh, to keep it as small as possible. Right now, as far as I know, it's like 15 megabytes or something, yeah. Yeah. which is not really uh, that big. Uh, and also our like, user experience study started to give out some results saying that like we in the beginning we were asking like 43 different questions it was like a complete uh, 43 <laughs> okay uh, so now it's very small so that was one of the reasons but uh, again, to get the other like um, population, just as Punar was describing, we think web platform and also an SMS, like a very simple SMS reminder algorithm would be would be very helpful uh, sure. incorporating other uh, populations. Oh yeah, but so you're planning on an SMS reminder uh, oh, yeah. that would be done through the app or outside? Or is there like? Uh, so that's, I guess, a technical discussion we need to have. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So let me summarize the current status of uh, Herva in terms of technology. Yes. We're using .NET on the backend, and we're using a hybrid mobile application technology called Ionic, which is based on Android JS. Um, this uh, for the MVP MVP phase. Um, we currently use these technologies, but we want to change it uh, to a more reachable and maintainable uh, language. On the backend, probably we're going to use Node.js uh, because JavaScript is a really uh, has a wide uh, range of usage in terms of developers, and it would help us a lot uh, for any JavaScript developer to contribute to our uh, backend system. Uh, and on the uh, mobile app side, um, as you can see, there are some glitches and uh, we came to a conclusion that hybrid mobile applications uh, isn't um, yet complete to be used for Android devices, which are, uh, which there is like thousands of them. And compatibility is a major issue and because we don't have the manpower or the money, to do a wide range of QA testing. So um, in that scenario, we will be using Kotlin and Swift and support um, old languages, uh, old operating system versions. And yeah, and our goal is to finish that in the next couple of months. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing Luca understood uh, what you said. I was lost too, but um, maybe that's uh, Luca would have something to say about it or questions. Yeah, any questions regarding technology? Uh, we cannot hear you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, not that much. It's, uh, it's actually pretty clear if you, if you know development, of course. Uh, so yeah, I think in in that case, like when you go deep into like technology, here it would be 
it would be kind of uh, hard to explain in detail. So, uh, but yeah, basically it, it's it's pretty basic and and a nice um, a nice uh, code architecture. So, yeah, apart from that, I don't really have anything to add. It's pretty uh, basic. Yeah. Um, and um, so I maybe I missed something when you said, but um, so do you have particular needs that you need, like that you need help on? Because you said you don't have a lot of manpower, but uh, yeah, on on the advice or uh, maybe manpower, but that won't be here tonight. But that we could reach out to, um, you know, from on the platform. And this video will also be shared, uh, you know, with the whole community. So uh, if you have anything you actually want to ask the community, this is a good place to do so too. Yeah, so in that scenario, uh, we actually need native iOS and Android developers who wants to contribute to such app. And obviously we need a JavaScript developer. Uh, to help us with our backend. Uh, so any help on the technology side would be perfect. We, have, we will be, um, we already open source our entire code, but because we are writing from scratch for the Hera 2.0 version, um, we, will, we will be uh, using GitHub or GitLab, I don't know, uh, and open source the whole process and every, anybody who wants to contribute or find bugs and or just say hello or welcome to do so. Uh, yeah. Great, cool. And um, I I saw that uh, someone came online. I am not sure if this is Katya. Katya, is this you? Do you want to present yourself? Because we have all presented ourselves. Uh, so in case you want to say, you know, what you, who you are and what you do, so maybe they can ask a question in case your skills can help them. So Hello, I'm sorry, I'm a bit late. Um, I'm, I studied fine arts and I specialized in design and I worked as a graphic designer uh, for some time for a company and now I'm doing neuroscience. I'm a PhD student studying brain development and evolution using MRI data. And I'm very interested in data visualization and we are building web tools together with Roberto Toro. <laughs> Um, where we want to enable people to work together uh, collaboratively on brain data. And so we love web development and we think it's very important that people collaborate. And um, I think I was invited to, to see if I can help with, like, with anything UI or UX or anything. But I'm sorry, I was a bit late. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. You're here with us. <laughs> so yeah, I. Oh, what a goodbye, by the way, because I have to leave. Uh, but I think the connection between the Katia Roberto and the Hera can be a sparkling of beautiful things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, so yes, I, I actually uh, asked Katia because in one moment you talked to me about you like UX and UI and you were, you know, uh, um, maybe for advice or anything and, and Katia has a great eye. So I figured maybe uh, I could put you in contact and uh, like this, uh, if you have any questions related to that, maybe Katia could help you with it. Um, so actually, so that's not my area either. Uh, so it would be great if, uh, if Katya is willing to obviously, if she can go over our research protocol to see if there's like stuff that she would recommend and stuff like that. Would, would that make sense at all? I saw a shared screen, but I think that was part of your app. If you have more of like screens that you would like to share, or if you have like a document you would like to share, I'm happy to have a look. Uh, yeah, actually it's on our, on our uh, post, I think. UX design protocol, should, uh, research protocol should be there, but I'll double check definitely after this call and just make sure to uh, make sure that it reaches you. Okay, yes, thank you. If you can, do you have more screens? Like if you could quickly just click through, you can talk about other things in the meantime, just like if you have more visual that you would like to share. Uh, 
Oh yeah, this is the app. By the way, if you have an Android phone, you can download it, Every, everyone. <laughs> if you have an Android phone, you can just download it. Uh, so this is like the, the information that participant puts in about themselves. Uh, if they're pregnant, they put information about their pregnancy, like the last menstruation, uh, menstruation. and if they had any prenatal visits. Uh, and if they have a children, they just put, it, uh, put the information there. The reason for information for pregnancy and children is to, uh, for the program to calculate the vaccination dates or the prenatal checkup dates. So they can send reminders, the app can send reminders. So this is the main, um, main uh, uh, intervention. In addition to that, they can visualize their uh, reminders in the calendar, uh, just like this, and just go with them. Uh, or they can um, just say yes or not if they completed the vaccines. Uh, in addition to that, they can look up the health centers nearby to their location. Oh, nice. um, they can upload uh, their health reports and read up information about uh, some of the things that are related. That's very nice. Is there a way if the calendar is pre-scheduled based on when the baby's born and recommendations of when to vaccinate that they can go and actually say like, oh, this is not like, it doesn't fit my schedule. I will personalize that. I, I, can you repeat the question? I was just wondering how personalized or customized it can be. Like if you get that reminder, you should vaccinate your kid now. How is the follow-up that I actually make an appointment that fits into my calendar, into my schedule? Uh, well, when there is time for vaccination, um, the users can do it in one month. So the app reminds them every week so that they can schedule any time in that one month period. Okay. Yeah, we use that one month as the gap for time the vaccine vaccination. So like after one month, they can obviously still go, but it would be... Um, late. Yeah, late. Okay. This is one of the like the um, example reminder. And and do you have feedback like when they would go or why they would do it after that one month? Because you ideally wouldn't like your users to feel bad, like in case they were not able to make it within that month. I don't know how that looks like in your app then, but just like taking that case into account. Um, to have like a gentle way of extending that period or not making them feel bad if they miss that within one month. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I mean... Well, uh, basically they can do it uh, after one month, but it's going to be not a timely vaccine, but a late vaccine. So it's just going to show up in our data as late. They're not going to have any, like a... Uh, like punishment or bad yeah. value. It doesn't say in big in red, you are late. No? Yeah. <laughs> no, All but right. maybe you want to create like a field where they can answer to you why they actually don't make it within one month so that they feel like... Yeah. So you can uh, that case and they're not like falling through a grid if they do it late, kind of. Right now we are collecting that feedback manually, pulling people up, uh, because one of the main issues that we always had are still having is user interaction. They, like uh, if they're interacting with app enough to visualize the, the, the reminders, that's a, like a good point for us. So we, expecting them to write a feedback note or stuff is at the moment did not seem like a priority to us. So instead we're just right now randomly like randomizing the, the database and calling people up to see what, uh, like whether they would like to do an interview and also whether they have been going to the vaccines or any other issues and stuff like that. Okay. And, um... 
because one situation I could imagine is if somebody moved and doesn't speak the language of where they are actually now with their baby, they may have problems getting in touch with the authorities that would actually vaccinate their kid. And that's maybe something where you can propose help. Or if you have, um, I don't know if there's any interaction between your users that they can say, I did it and my kid got like, I don't know, red cheeks or something, but everything was fine so that they kind of reinforce themselves and like make a bigger community around that one vaccination. Maybe they want to think about it. Like if people are not pro vaccination, they may be interested in looking what people said that use this app and actually went to vaccinate their kid. I don't know if there's any plans for that or that may be, um, it's just an idea. And, and it's also it's also making me think of um, so I talked to you already uh, Aral about this um, app called Biloba in France that is also for recording health uh, but not uh, dedicated to refugees really for everyone in France and uh, vaccinations and one thing that um, the one of the co-founders of this app told us unfortunately he couldn't be here today but I'm going to uh, put you two in contact and he told us that one of the things that happened a lot is that people would write to him on through the app so would write a question on the app saying like I don't know about this really some medical questions and I was wondering if this happens to you too if you get or if you have a messaging system and also if you get questions that you don't have the answers to or that you uh have to find a way to answer to because they're like oh there's this vaccination that i'm supposed to do but i don't think i should do it or i don't know if i did it you know questions do they have any ways of asking you questions and do they ask you questions yeah in the trainings they generally ask questions about uh, vaccinations like whether uh, they cost anything or is there any specific centers for refugees to get vaccine? Um, or like about pregnancy, you know, maybe some uh, people want to get pregnant, even if it's not our uh, main concern, they uh, ask us questions like that. And um, well, we stand like we don't give medical advice to anybody. Uh, we just refer to them to our uh, medical consultants, which are like uh, Syrian uh, doctors. Um, so since they are from the community, they know them better and they get uh, better advice. So we refer them to these people. And do you have a messaging system through the, through the app? No, but that's one of the things. Yeah, that that's a lot of goals. Yeah, but at the moment we don't. I'm really right. sorry. No, that's fine. You, it, now it looks like you do have a messaging system. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, and so the little envelope at the top of the screen is to... For notifications. Yeah, print to oh, you the... Right. Oh, so that would be one of my uh, feedback on the on the app is that for me, this means like send a message or doesn't mean notification. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to click on the envelope and I can what do I'm, something. Uh, you actually do receive notification, but these are the list of old ones. Yes, yes, I understood. I'm, I'm just saying as uh, in, uh, I guess that's UX, yeah. uh, that, that the... For me, the envelope thing doesn't mean notifications. I'm going to check out the old notifications. It just means send a message or, uh, you know, you know something about messages, and not uh, just. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that's a that's a good thing to. So yeah, it, it should be a bell icon, in order sure. to give you the impression that it's the notification center. I didn't hear. Sorry. Yeah, it it should be a bell icon. Oh yeah, maybe a bell. All right, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more common uh, for yeah. notifications, right? And yes. and what is what is for the little the little men at the, at the right? What is on there? 
Ah, your personal information. Ah, a profile. Oh, it's your profile. All right, so they can fill out their profile and their phone number and address and all right and photo. And they can read the user agreement and also the the um, personal data collection and usage law uh, of, the, of Turkey. Yeah. All right, and yeah, just. So Sorry. Uh, sorry, it's me. Um, I was just wondering, uh, talking about data, uh, do you plan on uh, anonym, anonymizing it and using it for making analysis and things like this? So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. are you? How far are you in that process? You know, how how is it working? Yeah. In the in the new version, that's our goal. Uh, anonymizing user data. Okay, yeah, okay. So I misunderstood. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so, yeah, I think so. We have like how many users now? Uh, we have 200 users. So, yeah, we just collected the, the demographic uh, data and everything. So, our table one is ready. Uh, and then for the for the other feedbacks, we're just going to be calling them up uh, in that process. So that's going to be the way you're going to uh, do the quantitative analysis, uh, mm -hmm. most likely. Because the original plan in, the, in our GCC application was to actually do a uh, control trial, but uh, because of the, the issues that I was telling you about, about the app being very, very late and stuff, we changed it into more about creating the MVP or understanding the user experience rather than the, like the hardcore quanti uh, quantitative analysis. All right. And do you um, have right now any feed feedback that you got from on the UX and on the app that itself from the users that you have in mind that you can share with us or that well, if they say there's there are things that are complicated for them or that are really easy, that are really helpful or that aren't or that are missing or no. Yeah, as far as I know, uh, there's nothing to generalize because it's very personal. Some uh, people think it's very easy to uh, use and some people find it hard to understand. And uh, some, read a lot about the health information and wants more uh, information and some uh, say that they already know this information and don't need to read them again. So I don't think at the moment we can generalize it, but the more we interview people, the better we can understand the whole participants. Yeah, we have like 10 interviews done, as far as I know, and five of them transcribed. Uh, we're going to at least do 16 to 20 before starting the analysis mm -hmm. uh, of those data. Oh, um, just about the health information part, it makes me, uh, it reminds me of an app that I've heard about um, that is about also following pregnancy and period for women. And uh, it also um, gives you, at the same time, uh, helps you follow if you're pregnant or if you have a period, you know, uh, different information about the symptoms, what you feel, what happens, and et cetera. You can all write it down. But also, it gives you health information. And maybe it would be interesting for you to see how they present it. Because um, uh, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's called FLO, Flow. So in case uh, you want to check it out, it's uh, how uh, they show the health information might be interesting for you. Okay. I mean, it's not really health information, but you know, information, uh, other information. Yeah, no, definitely we need a lot of work on the design. Yeah. You know, of the, um, so basically what we did with this health uh, information is to be able to sort of like protect ourselves. We took the information right out of the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Health's uh, information uh, like sources. Uh, the reason was to make sure that 
uh, like we were aligned with them because as you know refugee issue is a sensitive topic uh, mm -hmm. um, so yeah but definitely there are better ways to pre uh, present this information and we need to work on yeah, I just was thinking about it. It, it once when you were in the stage of wanting to improve this, uh, might be useful. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. But in general, I think you made a lot of effort. Like I took some screenshots because I don't have an Android phone. I will not be able to install it. But I took some screenshots as you were quickly going through, and I will review them again. But I think you have like done an amazing job on. on yeah, this. definitely like it's really like nice clean and i think people will be able to find what they want to find like it's very nicely arranged i was just wondering about the big emergency button did people click by by error on that button already like it's nice that it's on page one but it's so prominent i would be afraid of hitting it by chance by error um when you click only types numbers Okay, yeah, sorry, I didn't know what happened when you clicked that button, but it, it doesn't go immediately anywhere. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, it looks very nice and clean. Do you know if, like, um, if there is any opportunity that you can easily link, like, make one common calendar and ask people if they get there within this month, you should do your vaccination, um, that they have the option to share their calendar, and then they could actually, because it's for refugees, it's like a community, and they may feel comfortable if they know, oh, Within that month, like um, I can, I can choose any of these dates, and and maybe they see somebody has chosen a date, and they can join them, like pick the slot right after, so they would actually meet at the hospital or something. I don't know if that's of interest, but I imagine it. Yeah. Oh, uh, that is something that also was in the um, in the ideas of people during the creation of project was that. Um, it's actually a difficult experience to go vaccinate yourself or vaccinate your children and that uh, making it easier by going together, by making it something more fun is also something that could be of interest. So I think I'm just uh, going following what uh, Katya is saying about this. It's, uh, I'm guessing it would be quite complicated for the data because they would need to allow people to see when they're going and stuff like that. But some way of like creating um, a sense of not being alone could be a pretty cool uh, through the app since you already have a bunch of users finding a way for them also to interact could be interesting. I, I also have a question from someone uh, who wrote it down to me if uh, when I can ask it for, for them. The question yeah, was, hi, this is, oh, this is it's great. Grace. All right, it was great. So you can ask it yourself. We can hear you if you want. Yeah, okay. Uh, my question was uh, regarding the Data Pro Protection Act, um, because you're actually uh, picking uh, health information for these patients so that you have um, their age, you have their name, you have their um, addresses, phone numbers, and stuff like that. So how do you guarantee that um, nobody can breach that information, and how do you store that data? So in this scenario, there is a law in Turkey called, called Data Protection Law, uh, which is KBKK in initials. Uh, so the first question that we should be asking um, before answering that question is security. So security is, uh, no company in the world can provide 100% of security. So it's not an ideal thing, and I don't want to lie to anybody that we can and we will do that because even Google is also hacked uh, in this century. So uh, our role is to, so according to the Turkish law, we should, we need to store these kinds of data inside the Turkish continent. There is um, around 120 steps that we should follow in order to secure our infrastructure and our backend. Uh, and in order to, uh, and after we finish each of these tasks, um, we plan to get a certification in order to say that we are we have a security that is as safe as as a bank. So these kinds of data is really sensitive data and we know that it's really important to store these kinds of things and uh, one of the goals that we want to do is by open sourcing this code uh, we want anybody in 
uh, that is uh, that uh, that wants to contribute or, or make our application or backend a better place. Uh, Feel free to do that. Uh, just to add to what Kiros was saying, so from the research perspective, how we got the ethical board, IRB board, IRB on board, uh, was that only one person, project coordinator uh, from the admin, admin portal has the access to uh, on raw data. So there are different user, uh, what do you call them? Types, mm -hmm. user types. Yeah, yeah, user types. User yeah. types. Permission so, levels. Yeah, permission levels. So raw data can only be seen by the project coordinator. The researchers who are three people can see the anonymized data in the in the dashboard that we have. Uh, and for the for the database side of things, as far as I know, it is uh, the secured in a double yeah in it, it, double it, it, yeah, it's, uh, it's encrypted uh, through SSL and we're using customized uh, tokens to authenticate the mobile application between the servers. And on the other hand, our database is only, uh, can only be accessed through a certain IP address and other than that, it's all blocked through the firewall. And yeah, so at this stage, we're doing anything in our um, power to make this app as secure as possible, but uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> Did I answer your question, Grace? Oh, we can't. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it did. Um, yeah. Because I know that like in France, um, the law is really strict about that kind of um, information and you have to have um, uh, a lot of um, processes in place to just make sure that the security and the information is secured and the database has been approved for storing that kind of data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I know for a fact, like I, I travel between back and forth between US and Turkey because we now opened our open Terra as a nonprofit in US too. So we have a Boston office now. And I was advised by a uh, lawyer in US telling me that do not access the dashboard in US because that might be breaking the law, uh, like accessing the data in Turkey. So it's, yeah, I'm not touching anything. So <laughs> I know how sensitive it can get. Cool. Um, uh, we're uh, nearing the end of this event. Um, uh, does anyone else have any other questions uh, or suggestions or anything? Yeah, actually, I had a, I had one, but it's more for like future developments, and I don't know how it uh, can get through what was the uh, last part of this discussion. But have you planned, for example, to make a doctor's profile? You know, like on a second part, let let's say a doctor's profile have a, has a list of the different people on the app, and like that, it facilitates basically the communication and what are the data shown to the doctors or something like that. Uh, so one of the one of the plans was to create a provider side of this intervention. Basically, um, the part of the the patient, uh, well, they're not the patient, but participants can use a QR code to share that with the with the doctor that they want, uh, so that they can see their data and everything. Uh, because uh, as I do think what you're saying is extremely important. While I was working in, with the refugees in the border, Syria borders, I had patients who received a polio vaccine for nine different times in a year mm. um, because there was no official record of it. Uh, and like a provider side would, would actually help with that a lot. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely one of the things that we, we were thinking about. But, as you're saying, it's very important. Yeah. And, and it makes me also think of, um, we have in France this website called Doctolib, which is a website where you can uh, take appointments with doctors directly on the website. And uh, just it's also something that could be cool one day to link to the app is that you could directly take an appointment uh, online. 
I don't know if you have such a thing in Turkey. In France, we do have a website like this. And uh, we do have one app uh, by Ministry of Health, but the issue is it's very um, so it's very slow and it's very very big. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You shouldn't do it. All right. Uh, but you can you can take appointments directly on their thing, is that yeah, yeah. 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 that anyway I was just linking to the doctor's part and to the appointments part. That's parts that you could extend somehow to make it easier for your users and also more attractive, making it all linked together. Yeah. I don't know. Did you have yeah uh, something else? Uh, um, no, but just to add that, for example, I, I was wondering if like features like that, that are like maybe not the priority now, but maybe at some point you would like to do, would it be something pertinent for you to put it as a need on the Juggle platform and like that some people can already design some, uh, like try to uh, conceptualize the ideas uh, or, or on GitLab also, I don't know, Luca, uh, how we do it. I think we also have a way for Juggle where we put all the different ideas and how people could help actually contribute in each on their sides without directly working with us. Yeah. <clears throat> what, 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 you, what we use uh, for, like, uh, to help people that want to contribute to know exactly what needs need to be done on, on the platform is basically use the um, issue cards functionality of GitLab to have a, a list of all the uh, tasks that need to be done basically, whether it be like design, um, development, anything. And then anyone, you just explain it like uh, briefly or in details and then anyone can join the conversation and then let you know if they can help. And then, yeah, that's, that's how it works. And I think that, for, that, that could be a good solution for you guys. Oh, we can, we can put it yeah, they will definitely do that. Great. Um, any other questions? It's 701 here in France. <laughs> no? All right. Well, um, thank you so much for having participated, uh, for all of you, and uh, especially the Hera team for presenting their projects. And uh, of course, I will put you in contact with anyone, everyone that I talked about and uh, that I also have in mind here and uh, who have been also participating here today. And uh, we'll, see, we'll talk very soon. <laughs> and this, this video will be online also um, on Facebook and on the platform. And uh, we'll advise everyone when we have the next open juggle. Okay. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.